Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Courtney. If you're returning, welcome back. Shout out to everybody over on Patreon. And if you are watching with military affiliation, thank you so much for your service. This is going to be a new part in my intro from here on out. You guys are going to be seeing more of me than you will be seeing the episode or the movie that I will be reacting to. It is for copyright claim and copyright strike purposes. It's to prevent that from happening because when that happens, I have to take down the video and re-edit and I am trying to work on other stuff to get up for you guys. So that is the purpose. And for those of you who want to be in your feelings because I talk a lot, well, newsflash. That is what Courtney does over here. If you have a problem with me pointing out the obvious and pointing out things that are going on in the dialogue, there is a reason for that as well. It's for my Patreon people. I know that I'm uploading this on YouTube. This is the YouTube version, but with Patreon, I will talk about things happening on screen because I do not show the entire footage, okay, over on Patreon. And guys, we're going to get into episodes five and six, the Apple and the Doomsday Machine. I'm looking forward to it. So let's see what these have in store for me. Good looking group of people. Oh, we got more folks. Nice. The Garden of Eden was just outside Moscow. Just outside Moscow. All right. Ah, here we go. Great, another episode with flowers shooting stuff at people. Ooh. Wow, but the other ones didn't kill people. We're losing potency in our antimatter pods. But you say there's nothing to worry about. Well, sir, I didn't exactly say that. No, he didn't. I hear it's nice down there. Yeah, minus the poisonous plant. <laughs> Subsurface vibrations from miles in all directions, artificially produced. But I want you and Marple to make a full reconnaissance. So be careful. There may be other danger besides poisonous plants. I think there will be. There's a humanoid hiding directly behind us. Well, let's try to immobilize it. All this beauty, and now Mr. Hendorf dead, somebody watching us. It's frightening. It's an Enterprise mission. <laughs> I've been wanting to get you in a place like this for a long time. Okay, now. London, I know you find each other fascinating, but we're not here to conduct a field experiment in human biology. <laughs> Whatever it is, it moves like a cat. Jim, I don't like this. Neither do I. I don't like it either. Extremely low specific gravity. Fragile. Good cleavage. Oh! That might come in handy. Wait, hold on, but was it the rock that did that? Or was it just where he threw it? Our antimatter pods are completely inert. Something from the surface. It's like a pail of water on a fire. Mm. And it's pinpointed in the area of that village we located down there. And there doesn't seem to be any immediate danger. Maybe no danger now, but you never know. What's that? Some of the thorns like those that kill Hindor. Oh, no, 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 no. Kill your stuff. Y'all duck. Jim! <laughs> Wait, hold on. He's a Vulcan. Is this gonna... Is, um, Maybe he's just passed out. Security alert. Y'all keep playing around down there. Is he alive? His tail better be alive. We're beaming up. Notify transporter room. Okay, good. Everybody's... Uh-oh. Something's interfering with the transporter room again. Scotty, energize. <laughs> He's like, what? We can't make transporter contact, sir. Is the transporter malfunction tied in with the trouble you're having with the antimatter pod? Could be. Oh, he's moving. Dr. McCoy's potion is acting like all his potions, turning my stomach. <laughs> I surmised you were unaware of that plant, so I stepped in front and took the thorns yourself. Yeah. Do you know how much Starfleet has invested mm -hmm. in you? 122,200. Never mind. <laughs> he was like, that was rhetorical. <laughs> and we got a storm coming in. Lovely. So I'm about to get electrocuted. Yep. Just the way the camera work kept going back to him. Like it just, the foreshadowing was there. Y'all just losing people left and right. You're the village. Mallory. Mallory, you all right? Come in. Interference. And Captain, there's something else. Oh, what's the something else? I never saw anything like So, why are you? Captain. He's dead. Captain. In each case, this was unavoidable. 
I mean, technically, yeah. Y'all don't know anything about this planet. You should have beamed up at the first sign of trouble. I mean, technically, yes. I also have the option to disregard those orders if I consider them overly hazardous. This is true. Drop my guard for a minute. Now three men are dead. Self-recriminations. Woo, what? Our friend is back. You and Chekhov created a version. At least we got a good plan going. And soon I will not have you address me in that tone of voice. What do you want, violins? <laughs> what do you want, <laughs> violins? <gasps> wow. Oh, we have a sensitive soul. I won't hurt you. After I just punched you in the face. I am the eyes of Val. He must see. Who is Val? So your creator or god? I am the leader of the feeders of Val. Feeders? What did that mean? They are my ears for Val. Something has grabbed us from the planet surface, like a giant tractor beam. Oh, y'all going down? Maintain full reverse thrust against the pull. Put a team on that warp drive, get it working. This is not good. If you can't get those warp engines working, you're fired. Yeah. Wait, what? He's fired? Oh, I, okay. We're gonna save my thoughts for that till the end. Okay, now. <laughs> what in the cave of wonders do we have going on here? <laughs> Generating great power. It would also seem to be a... Oh, he must not have permission. How do you talk to Val? Val calls Good question. Him. Only then. When he is hungry, you may be able to speak with him. Like the feeders. He's hungry. Mm-hmm. We will give you food and drink. If you are tired, you may rest. Yes, to plump you up real nicely. At least that's what I'm getting from it. So what, do they like sacrifice their tribal members? The uh, children, little ones like yourselves, they grow. Oh, replacements. Replacements? What is love? Love is when two people are... <laughs> he just had to slide it into view. <laughs> holding, the touching. <laughs> Vol has forbidden this. Well, there goes paradise. <laughs> well, Welcome to Vol. Back at you. I am Spock. <laughs> Fail to see what they find so amusing. <laughs> well, they're entertained. You are welcome in the place of all. Oh, I didn't do it right. It's like this. <laughs> Status report, Scotty. No change, Captain. We're still struggling. Sir, we're doing everything within engineering reason. Then use your imagination. Well, there goes that. They're not growing old. And I can't begin to tell you how old they are. Okay, that explains some things. <laughs> I must say, those are the exploding rocks that are not exploding when they drop them. There is no living being there. It is a machine. Nothing more. Ooh. That's not the way. <laughs> the Enterprise has only ten hours left in which to break free. Wow, we've lost six hours already? The right of humanoids to a free and unchained environment. Another is their right to choose a system which seems to work for them. Yeah. Doctor, these people are healthy and they are happy. I can see both sides. I was dropping bit by bit. Nominal, but a definite drain. Okay. It'll take us another eight hours to complete the work. That's cutting it a bit yeah. fine, Scott. Aye. Yeah, they're in, a, they're in a pickle. Captain, we're trapped Sit down on this. and have something to eat. That's some interesting looking food. I mean, if they don't know anything about... Reproducing. They don't seem to have any natural... Uh, Urges. I mean, how is it <laughs> done? I mean, she's got a valid question. Hey, you're the science officer. Why don't you explain it to the young lady? Wait, hold on. Is she... Wait, does she not know how... They would receive the necessary instructions. That's not too far off. Nowadays, you can just kind of Google whatever you, you need to try and figure out. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend that because there's false information and stuff. <laughs> Any place we can be together is paradise. <laughs> They're probably like, ooh, what is this? It's like two kids being like, ooh, what's going on? Like, we don't do that. <laughs> See, now they're about to try it out. It did seem as though it was pleasant to them. Little interaction between humans. Hear me out, the eye makeup on her looks really, really nice. They're not about to be punished for this, are they? It is pleasant, Makara. Oh, they've been corrupted. 
I just don't want, I just don't want anything bad to happen to these two. They're so innocent. Uh-oh. Val, he is angry. The law is plain. I have given you the words of Val. <laughs> the way he showed up. We saw the strangers. The two of them do this thing. You copied them? We meant no harm. Uh-oh. Val speaks truly to me. The newcomers are a danger. Yes, corrupting the minds of the people. We are to kill the strangers. They've never done that before. Find a, a heavy stick. Come up from behind the stranger and do this. Bash him in the head. Vault needs to be taken out. All this over a little bit of kissing and smoochy smooch. If we do what it seems we must, we'll be in direct violation of the non-interference directive. They should have the opportunity of choice. I agree. You'll realize that within 45 minutes, the ship will be pulled down into the atmosphere. Yeah, cutting it close. People of Val seem to have disappeared. Yeah, this is about to be a sneak attack. We mean no harm to you or your people. Here comes the lightning. <laughs> yeah, if Val can just zap people, then what's the point of getting the people who live here to bash all of them in the head? Mr. Spock is catching it this episode. Yes, ma'am! Well, that plan didn't end well, but is he okay? Put them in the hut. They've learned to kill. Oh no, he's really dead? <sighs> we have 12 minutes before entering atmosphere. All right, Scotty, put her in full reverse. Get her out of there. Come on, y'all can do it. Captain, we're doing it, we're pulling away! All right. I guess you'll have to fire me, sir. You're fired. Yeah. 400 people. They'll die because I couldn't see a warning sign. Come on, McCoy, snap him out of it. Scotty, do you still have phaser power? Aye, but what? Lock all banks on the coordinates of the energy field you located down here. Take it out. Ship's pulling away must have weakened it considerably. It has to be fed. All right, bring it on down, baby. I guess when its eyes completely stop glowing, we're good. All right. I think we are good to go. Ball is dead. Tractor beam gone. Potency returning to antimatter pods. Scotty, you're rehired. <laughs> okay. Paul cared for us. So you think. You learn to mm -hmm. build for yourselves. Aw, oh, look at those two. What are children? The little babies. Just go on the way you're going, you'll find out. But I, w I would still educate them so that they are prepared. <laughs> Captain, you are aware of the biblical story of Genesis. Yes. Adam and Eve tasted the apple, and as a result, we're driven out of paradise. Precisely, Captain. Mm -hmm. Are you casting me in the role of Satan? <laughs> I am not aware. Don't say of anything smart. That description. <laughs> I really like the connections that they made in this one with uh, the Book of Genesis and the Apple and this is paradise and these people don't know anything about anything being evil, anything being good. It's like we're just living our lives. We are provided for. We're just happy. I, I like. I did like those little connections that they were making there. Now. During breaks, I was taking a couple of notes. Um, Scotty being fired, yeah, we knew that wasn't gonna happen. And if it happened, it would be a short period of time. It was just like a matter of a couple of minutes. Scotty was doing the best he could with what he had. I mean, look, I'm just saying. I don't think it was, I understood the, mm. I understood Captain Kirk and his like reasoning for, he didn't want the Enterprise to be destroyed. That's 400 plus people. I mean, I get it. But Scotty is literally doing the best that he can. And we've seen Scotty do a lot of stuff. So, I mean, yeah, he's excellent at what he does. So I don't think threatening him with being fired was technically the right thing. However, this could have been one of those situations where your boss basically um, is trying to scare you into doing well. I don't know. I mean, it's happened to me at, at jobs and I'm just kind of like, meh. The uh, statement, um, I only speak to Val, that reminds me of like an ancient civilizations where you have like the seer or the priest or priestess that is the only one that communicates with this like deity that everyone prays to or everyone, you know, worships. And they're the main person that goes and has the conversations and the communications. That's kind of what that reminded me of. The only real thing with this episode that kind of caught my attention was that Captain Kirk didn't think to beam everybody up when we had the first death. 
And I know that he said that and he was going back and forth in his brain. It was really cool to finally kind of see him have that moment where he's just kind of like, darn, if I had done this, this wouldn't have happened. If, you know, like finally getting to see that real like internal struggle, like don't get me wrong, we've seen Captain Kirk struggle before, but that moment of darn, man, did I didn't do what I should have done. But of course, in hindsight, you think about how things could have been done differently. So I get it. I get where Captain Kirk was coming from. And uh, don't get me wrong. Once that happened, and I noticed that a plant was killing people. Oh, we would have been gone. <laughs> we would have been gone very, very quickly. But that's just me. So we're going to get into the next episode titled The Doomsday Machine. And let's see what that one has in store for me. The stress call definitely came from one of the solar systems in this sector, Captain. Where's my home girl at? Sensors show this entire solar system has been destroyed. Ooh. Sensors show nothing but debris where we charted seven planets last year. Continue a search pattern. Well, at least we see Mr. Sulu. By configuration, a starship stopped in space. She appears to be drifting. Yeah, just floating there. She may have been wrecked by whatever destroyed these solar systems. Park, full evaluation of the damage to the constellation. It's severe. The entire bridge is damaged and uninhabitable. So who attacked the constellation? Or what attacked? Mr. Spock, you're in command. Acknowledged. All right, Mr. Spock. The surface temperature of the inner planet is that of molten lead. The other has Ooh. an atmosphere poisonous to human life. So they definitely didn't go there. Phaser banks, exhausted. They didn't give up without a battle. Wow. Computer system is still intact. We can play back the oh. duplicate captain's log from the auxiliary control room. That's good. Perfect. Oh. Man. Jim Kirk. He's still breathing. Matt. Give him a moment. What thing? What was it? it? Answer me. What was it? Give him a minute. He's in a state of shock. Yeah. Very clearly. We tried to contact Starfleet. What happened to your crew? Oh, I, I had to beam them down. Where'd you beam them down to? So he, he killed his crew on accident? Yeah. From what it sounds like. They say there's no devil, Jim. Right out of hell, I saw it. Where's your crew? On the third planet. There is no third planet. Uh, yeah. He beamed them down on the planet, then he got destroyed. There was, but not anymore. Okay, I see where I, I messed that up. I could, I, I could. <laughs> I understand, that's eating him up. It's miles long with a with a maw that could swallow a dozen starships. She was attacked by what appears to be essentially a robot. Okay, that makes sense. A robot weapon that purposely destroys entire solar systems. Well, it must be destroyed. If it follows its present path, it will go through the most densely populated section of our galaxy. Of course. A machine like that, who would build it? We don't know. Good question. Did you ever hear of a doomsday machine? No, I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. I have heard of it. It's just that I, I, I never lost a command before. Dang, I was about to say something so hateful. There's a first time for everything. <laughs> Now's not the time. Red alert. Come on. Oh, is the robot coming back? Whoa. Wow. The Enterprise can handle it. I hope. We can't let it go beyond us to the next solar system. We have to stop it. Somehow, some way. What are the chances of deactivating? I would say none, Captain. Hopefully there's no issues with beaming up in this episode. Now look, this is just foolishness. Captain, we've been attacked. Transporter is damaged. We're taking evasive action. That's a smart robot. We're stuck, blind and deaf. Yep. Y'all just floating. I can't repair warp drive without a space dog. Then get me impulse power. Scotty is catching it these past two episodes. Let's see what we can do about this viewing screen. I've got to find out what's happening out there. No casualties, Mr. Spock. That's good. It's veering off. Back on course for the next solar system. Mm. I am aware of the Rigel system's population, Commodore, but we are only one ship. Yeah. Logically, our primary duty is to survive in order to warn Starfleet Command. I like that plan. 180 degree turn, hard about. We're going to attack. Does he have authority on the Enterprise? You will carry out my last order, Mr. Sulu. Mr. Sulu, listen to 
Mr. Spock, please. I am officially notifying you. I am assuming command of the Enterprise. Yeah, you did such a great job on the Constellation. That thing must be destroyed. You tried to destroy it once before, Commodore. Thank you. The result was a wrecked ship and a dead crew. Mm-hmm. This time I'm going to hit it with full phasers at point-blank range. You need to sit down somewhere. You have been relieved of command. Don't force me to relieve you of duty as well. Don't, don't y'all let this man do this. Dr. McCoy, step in. Doctor, you are out of line. So are you. Extremely. Unfortunately, Starfleet Order 104, Section B. Here we go. To blazes with regulations. You can't let him take command when you know he's wrong. Exactly. We'll also be asked to produce your medical records to prove it. Oh, dang. Now, you know I haven't had time to run an examination on him. And he's not going to go willingly now. You may leave the bridge, Doctor. You... <clears throat> you know what? Mr. Spock knows his duty under regulations, Doctor. Do you? Ooh, I don't like your attitude. Getting a little too comfortable in that chair, mister. Mm, I know your crew didn't like you one bit. I hope Mr. Spock is up to something. The impulse engine's control circuits are fused solid. I'm still heated about that man. <laughs> I think this is the most angry I have felt watching a Star Trek episode. I mean, the blatant disrespect. Helmsman, hold your course. Stand by all phaser banks. You're gonna get all these people killed. We must retreat, Commodore. The energy drain. I'm in command here, Mr. Spock. Nobody gives a flying rat's... <laughs> the tone's going on. He's, he's going to be like, what the heck are they doing? It's not doing anything. Just bounced off. Yeah, it's not working. Maintain course. Fire! Did he hit his head too hard? If I push these impulse engines too hard in the condition they're in, they'll blow apart. Ooh, I'm going to say, is it turning on them now? This ship has got to maneuver. Aye, sir. Sir, deflector shields are gone. I mean, this is just a suicide mission at this point. We've got to destroy it! Attempted Thank suicide you. would be proof that you were psychologically unfit for command. Yep, do it. I mean, Captain Kirk is just helpless, just sitting there watching this. Pull ahead, Mr. Scott. The fact that he was able to even get it to do anything, that's impressive. He still can't move. How can he just sit in that chair with a grin on his face? Maybe that thing will see us. Let the Enterprise go. It's very brave of you. I have one bank recharged. Scotty, just earned your pay for the week. <laughs> well, Scotty's not getting fired in this episode. Well, loose, Commodore. Good boy, Jim. Between the two of us, we'll kill that thing. No, that's not what the... No. Oh, oh gosh. It's closing fast on the Constellation. Fire phasers. <laughs> It's sucking in space rubble from those destroyed planets, refueling itself. Mm. Then we'll have to fight yeah. it now before it gets any stronger. Dude, no. We must transport the captain and the others from the constellation. Right. Can you raise Starfleet? No, sir, but I've got ship-to-ship -ship communications back. Picking up Captain Kirk. Now it's time to snitch. What happened to Spock? Nothing. I assumed command according to regulations. Captain Kirk, you gotta go off. I told you I am in command here. <sighs> Get my ship out of there. I told you I am in command here and I will give the orders, Captain. You're going to be out of a job completely and definitely. I'd, it's over for you. You can't relieve me and you know it according to regulations. Pinch him. Mr. Spock, I order you to assume command on my personal authority as Captain of the Enterprise. Mr. Spock, I would just pinch the man. You are relieved of command. I don't recognize your authority to relieve me. I do not wish to place you under arrest. I think you need to do that. You wouldn't dare. Oh, he would. Get your tail up. You're bluffing. Vulcans never bluff. <laughs> nope. Get up. No. You know I what? I suppose that they do. Oh, okay, that's what he was saying. Mr. Montgomery. Sir. You will accompany the Commodore to sick bay. Aye, sir. I will send more than one man with him. <laughs> Come on, man, put up a fight. You got it, man, you got it. I knew y'all needed multiple people with that man. The 
The best I can give you on impulse is one third power. The shields are up, but they won't last long. It's better than nothing. Shuttlecraft to Enterprise. Decker here. Huh. I'm gonna take this thing right down its throat. Oh, he's on a suicide mission. I've been prepared for death ever since I ever since I killed my crew. Matt, listen to me. Matt's not gonna listen. I think he made up his mind a long time ago. He is not thinking straight. May I offer my condolences on the death of your friend? Maybe Matt Decker didn't die for nothing. He had the right idea, but not enough power to do it. Scotty, can you set the ship's impulse engines to overload? Aye. It's a good plan. I'm gonna ram her right down that thing's throat. You'll be killed. Just like Decker. Y'all are gonna beam him up. We've rigged a delayed detonation device. The transporter is not working at 100% efficiency. Oh yeah, that's true. It's armed now. Press this one. 30 seconds later, poof. Once it's activated, there's no way to stop it. Hmm. Good to know. Come on, come on. What's the matter with that thing? It'll never work like this. It's the main junction circuitry. I'll get it. Mr. Scott, the speed is of the essence. He can do it. He can do it. Transporter operational. But this jury rigging won't last for long. He's got to come off now. Come on. Let's go. I mean, we know he's going to make it, but it's the suspense. <laughs> Rich, oh. short it out again. Of course. Gentlemen, beam me aboard. Mr. Scott. He's trying. Gentlemen, I suggest you beam me aboard. Oh. Try her now, Mr. Kyle. Bye. Okay. Good. Energy output zero. Radiation level normal. Well, that was stressful. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Captain. I presume your log will show that Commodore Decker died in the line of duty. Indeed it shall, Mr. Spock. I can't help wondering if there are any more of those weapons wandering around the universe. Probably. That raised my blood pressure. <laughs> that stressed me out. I, you know, ugh, I don't want to be, I, I like to think I'm a very understanding individual. I get that the Commodore, he, there was guilt. I understand. There was guilt. He probably in that moment felt like he needed to redeem himself and his crew. And that made him not think rationally. There you go. I think that's fair to say. And also, I did catch this, obviously. Um, when he said that he beamed down his people, but before that they were saying that the last two planets, one was extremely hot and the other one had an atmosphere that was poisonous to humans. I see where I was confused for a split second where I, was, where I thought to myself, so he ended up killing his people on accident. Because I'm thinking he beamed them down to those one of those last two planets, but no. He beamed them down to the third planet, which I guess would have been um, habitable and fine for them to be on. But then obviously this doomsday machine took them out as well. So yes, I did catch that. But I mean, Captain Kirk... I understand him being sad that his friend did what he did. But at the same time, I understand, I would have understood if let's say this there was a different ending and the Commodore actually did, didn't do what he did, survived, they were able to figure something out. And you know, Mr. Spock being as smart as he is, figured they could use the constellation to blow the thing up and well, not, it didn't actually blow up, but you know what I'm trying to say, like, immobilize it, kill it, whatever. Let's say the Commodore did survive. I'm pretty sure that Captain Kirk, out of, you know, his duty to Starfleet Command, would have made it very clear that the Commodore is no longer fit to command a, a ship. Like, I just... The way he went rogue, like, I understand it from all different angles. Don't get me wrong. In the moment, I was not happy with this man. I was pissed at this man. I was really upset that he just was not thinking straight. But then again, in times of trauma and crisis, I mean, some of us probably wouldn't be thinking straight either. Because you're thinking about, oh my god. Like, they found him in a state of shock. The man, I thought he was dead until I realized he was breathing. And, you know, just, I think he, he was just being eaten up by guilt. He was. And I think, 
if I had to make an assumption in his mind, he probably didn't realize. Like he knew he was commanding the Enterprise, but he was mm, so focused on what happened with his crew that he didn't really care for the safety of the crew on the Enterprise. He just kind of wanted to, by any means necessary, even if it wasn't going to work, put up a fight. And again, that, that didn't make him fit to lead, didn't make him fit to command either. I just, I... I get it from all different angles, but at the same time, I'm just kind of like, I mean, it sucks that he passed away, but I mean, he would have faced some type of consequences. I know he would have if he had survived. So yeah, that was, that was stressful as heck <laughs> to watch, but I, it was a good episode. It was good. The last one between the two, this one was my favorite out of the two. The other one, it was, it was fine, you know? But this one, this one kept me on the edge of my seat. To my lovely YouTube family, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know whenever I upload. Don't forget to comment. Let's interact a little bit because I love reading all the little fun facts that you guys share with me on YouTube. They're so much fun to read. I, I love learning new stuff, especially with like the different actors that are in the episodes. Um, just different, you know fun facts that you guys are sharing with me. They're really awesome. So I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.